here's Brody Brazil. And I hope everybody you know, gets the chance to, to understand the individual here. You know, a lot of times you're not familiar with David Quinn specifically. And why would you be? I mean, you know who he is and you know where he's been. Rangers head coach before that in the Avs organization and uh, call, big college coach at Boston University for a handful of years. Played at BU. Um, and even going back, the, the original story that really trips me out was him being a 13th overall pick in 1984 by Minnesota. And for you kids out there, that's the North Stars, not the Minnesota Wild. <laughs> um, but overcame and actually, well, overcame this, this blood clotting disorder enough to obviously you know survive and have a very successful life, but could not get past it back then to actually play in the NHL. So frustrating that a young person like himself, who you would expect to be, you know, completely healthy and willing and able-bodied, 13th overall pick, never actually got to play an NHL game, but certainly has the background and the credentials and started his coaching career in 2009 at the AHL level with Lake Erie. And then by 2012, he was on the Avs bench. That was a quick stint there. Then he goes back to Boston for five years uh, and then 2018 got the call to coach the Rangers for three seasons. And then he was the Olympics coach, actually stepped into that role, right? Uh, last year in, in some last minute situations. So he's got a handful of experience and obviously he's got the connection with Mike Greer, uh, you know, and that's what's great about bringing in somebody like Greer's is that, you know, he is a shark as people remember him for a couple seasons, but he had stops and, and tastes other places so that he meets a David Quinn. He knows somebody like this who he trusts and thinks would be great in this role. Uh, David Quinn is about to turn 56, I think, in a couple days when I was doing the research. His birthday, yeah, late July. Um, but I think just, just going real fast back to the Rangers part of this. You know, he took over in New York after a couple seasons where I think like 16 and 17, I think they got to the second round and couldn't get past that. And, and you know, they were really hoping that he would be what pushed them through. Instead, those first two years, he didn't make the playoffs. They didn't make the playoffs, I should say. And then the last year was um, part of the 2021 season, which got halted due to the pandemic. And then they got in the play-in situation and couldn't really get into the actual uh, playoffs official, if, if, if I remember that correctly. But let's just say this. The three years there did not exactly go well. But you have to understand, totally different situation with the Rangers than what he's coming into with the Sharks. Here, it's pretty clear that the team is, and I'll go back to what I just said, I don't know if it's rebuilding or retooling or reshaping or remixing or whatever. They're, they are redoing something. With the Rangers, they were trying to go from, you know, gas pedal here to flooring it and seeing what they could get out of the team. And maybe they just didn't have the right build. Maybe they had the wrong expectations, you know, for the group. And they thought that changing the leader would would push them that extra step. So I don't look, I, I don't want to hold a couple mediocre or less than mediocre years against David Quinn coming in. He's done this once. High stakes, like you're the Rangers head coach. Uh, and it worked out, it, it was not a disaster, let's be honest about that. It just, it kind of was mediocre and it did not meet New York's expectations. And I'm also here to tell you that I've seen this a lot in professional sports, but especially the NHL on more than one occasion, somebody's first time at anything, specifically though, head coach. It could be any coach or uh, first call up for a player. There is so much to digest. And I realize he did this for multiple seasons, so he had time to settle in, but the overall point here is you are so much better your second time around. And especially for him having, what, a full last season to just kind of sit aside and digest and put the pieces together and think about what would I do different? What would I do better my next time around? And that's what this is for him with the San Jose Sharks. So there's a couple other things I really want to get to here. It's not just about Quinn in terms of who he is and how, what kind of coach he's going to be. It's really about a couple things here. Can he get the most out of this Sharks team? And you look at their rostered forwards right now, I still think that they are you know, a little bit short in the goal scoring department here. 
There's, and by the way, I'm going to look towards the younger players, some of them officially in the non-roster situation right now in just a second. But, you know, at the top between Hurdle, Couture, and Meyer, that was a high majority of your whole team's goals right there last year between three players. So if you take those three, and, and let's just say top six, I'm going to put them all together on one line because that's not how it will be, but let's just, two centermen, you get it. But Who's your other, who's, who else is part of your top six? Like, like that is really going to do some top six work. I know Barabanov could be up there. Um, it, it, there are other names here. I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying that, oh, there's nobody else to do it. I'm just saying they're a little bit still up front. I think not fully, not fully built out yet. But that to me is the opportunity for some of these young players to step in, a Bordalo. What can William Eklund do? I realized that last year, you know, going back to, to Sweden and the, the season didn't exactly pan out even over there how he wanted it to. A lot of people talking about Brandon Coe. How about Jasper Weatherby? Is it Ozzy Weisblatt's time in turn? Uh, in addition to a handful of other names on here. So just going back, um, you know, to the, to the Quinn aspect of this, this is his task. Like, how can he get the most out of a lot of early 20-year-old players? You know, look, look at these guys on the, on the non-roster side of it. Here, I'll, I'll go, back to the, uh, go back to the roster forwards in just a second. You know, most of these guys, look, look how old Logan is and, and Benino, 33 and 34. <laughs> Man, they are seasoned. I mean, relatively speaking. And Hurdle's 28, but yeah, you got a lot of mid-range players here. Nieto's 29. Um, by the way, here you can see their cap percentage, their age, obviously how they were acquired, uh, and some terms of their contracts. And, and the NTC is no trade clause, and the, the MNTC is modified no trade clause, and Hurdle has obviously the no move clause, and they just signed them to eight years. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's really going to be for me what what Quinn can get out of this group. And I don't think we have an answer to that yet. How will we know? It's based on assumptions. It's based on what Mike Greer wants to go with. Um, I'm not also saying that this team this season is playoff ready. Can we Can we anoint them that? You know, I think it's also a matter of setting expectations for Quinn and company. You don't want to put them here and say, well, you're, you're new at this. We've added just a couple new pieces. Go back to the playoffs, even though they haven't been there for three years. I think this still might take some time. Now, on defense, here's what it looks like without Brent Burns. You still have Carlson for five years, Vlasic for four, Shimek for another two. Uh, Marcus Nudavara is in there. Matt Benning. Uh, in addition to Merkley, Jacob Magna, Mario Ferraro, and... Uh, Santeri Hadika is part of the non-roster side of things right now, but I know that um, I've liked what I've seen from him. So that's what I was saying before, that, look, Brent Burns is a great player. There's no question about that. Uh, he's going to go to Carolina and, and hopefully pick up right where he left off with San Jose. They will love that out there. But I think the Sharks, with the cap space, with some flexibility, hopefully, that they can have uh, moving forward, they were, I, I really do think they will be okay on defense. They'll be, you know, they'll be able to hold the fort down defensively this year. And I'm saying, you know, literally defensive minded, but they'll be able to chip in some offense too. Merkley's another player, you know, um, how can a player like that thrive under David Quinn? It's, it's less to me about how Carlson or Vlasic or, you know, any of the older players do with, with the new head coach. I, I, this, this situation has to really benefit the youngest players the most. And then we just get into goaltending here, and something's got to give, right? And that's where we're going to get, I think, some flexibility between Kakinen and Reimer and Hill. A uh, decision has to be made there. And Aaron Dell back with the Sharks, too. I mean, they are just goalie, uh, goalie loaded right now, so... We'll see how all that shakes out. So I, I know I spent a lot of time on that, but uh, I'm, I am interested in David Quinn. I can't wait to see the hire take place. 
And I can't wait to see what the staff looks like and what he says about all this. But I'm telling you right now, my biggest thing is his ability to coach up the Sharks' youngest players. I think that's probably going to be, yeah, that's that's going to be the majority of it early on and through the early years. 